Hello oh, and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the data control language or DCL. Between data definition, data manipulation, and transaction control language, data control language is the one that's properly named. It's data control. What does that mean? Well, let's think about the purpose of a database. The main purpose of a data database is to secure the information, the data in a database, and make sure the proper people have access to it. Now, who's gonna give us this feature? Well, the control access is controlled by the data control language. And that's why I believe the name of it will tell you a lot. Let's not forget what we are doing. Data control language is an SQL language. What is SQL language? It's a software, it's a language that helps run the data management, data base management system. So we would use the software to manage the database. So data control language is part of these languages. Let's go ahead and get started to discuss the data control. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Language. Well, it's a subset of an SQL, the structured query, la query language. Data control language is a subset of SQL, the structured query language, and used to control access to database within a database, to data within a database. Essentially, DCL commands are used to either grant or revoke access or permission and manipulate data. If I want to give you permission, I will give you permission. If I want to take that permission away, I will take that permission. I can give you certain permission to do certain things, update, delete, insert, so on and so forth. And this is crucial for maintaining the security of the database. This is making sure that only authorized users can view or make changes as necessary. Now, with, within this language, within the data control language, we have two command usually, the grant that gives access and the revoke that suspend or withdraw access. Even the names of those is pretty much self-explanatory. However, within data control language, we have to be aware of system level operations and object level operation. What is a system level operation? System level, it means the operation here is at a system level, concern the overall database system. This might include the ability to create or drop. Remember, drop is basically delete the database permanently, manage user account, or perform other administrative tasks. So this, these permissions are given at the system level and typically are broader in scope than those at the object level. For example, if I give, I might give you access to the whole database. You can do anything within the database. That's a system level. I'm giving you access to, to access to the whole database. For instance, in some databases, a DBA might use this command to grant a user the ability to create a new database. So you can create a new database. Here, the focus is not on a specific database object. You are not given access to a specific table or a specific view, but to the database overall. For example, in some SQL system, you might provide the user the ability to create a database with a command like this. Grant, create database to whoever the user to the user. This way the user will have the ability to create a database. Then we have the object level operation, which is within the data control language. Those are more specific, granular. They, they pertain to specific database object like tables, viewed, views or stored procedures. Now, when you are granting or revoking permission here, you are often working at the object level here. And this is usually for lower staff, you would assume. The common operation that can be controlled at the object level would include select, which is only read data, retrieve data, insert, add new data, update, modifying existing data, or delete removing specific data. So here you're giving access to a specific task. DCL command here can precisely control which users or role have permission on which object. An example will be 
to allow the user to read and modify data in a specific table you might use grant select what is select read data update on some table to some user and this is what you are granting to view and update whatever the table is and whoever that user is. Let's take a look specifically for the grant command, just to kind of see how the grant and the revoke command are, they are used. So consider a scenario where you have a database named sales and a table within that, that database called transaction. So remember, the whole database is called sales and we have a table and that table is the transaction table. You want, you want to grant the select, which is the read permission to a user named John. So user the grant command, you can say grant select on sales transaction to John. This will allow John to query and read the data from the transaction table, but John cannot modify. Later, if you decide that John no longer should have access, well, you can revoke this command. How do you revoke the command? Using the revoke command, you would revoke select on sales transaction from John and this will remove John to be able to query the transaction table. Now in practical just kind of practical implementation there will be additional complexities like providing access to only specific column, granting or restricting assets based on roles, or defining different level of access. In the real world this looks it might be a little bit different. For example I teach a course called QuickBooks and within QuickBooks if you if you create the company you could give access to users and this is basically a form of data control language okay but the above example should give you a basic understanding how dcl how dcl commands work let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhat lectures that's going to help you understand or consolidate what we just learned imagine you are a database administrator for a multinational company Globetech, the company, has a database named Global Sales, containing various tables. The most confidential table in this, in this database is Executive Transaction, which hold sales transaction made by executive clients. As a new requirement, you need to provide the marketing team with read-only access to the Executive Transaction table, which SQL you would use. Well, would you delete? Would you delete? And the answer is... No, no, you would not delete. You're not deleting anything. You're not deleting anything. Um, would you, you're not deleting any record here. Would you grant select? That's what, I think that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to grant them the ability to view. So grant select on, this is the global sales, is the database, dot the table executive to the marketing team. I believe B is a good answer. Insert new global sales values marketing teams. Uh, this is to add a record. We're not adding any record. Definitely we're not deleting anything. Revoke. The revoke is basically the opposite of global sales. It's out. Therefore the answer is B. Grant select on the name of the table dot the, the name of the database dot the name of the table to whoever you wanted it to give it to which is the marketing team what should you do now go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs that's going to help you understand data control language just like an sql language you want to be familiar with this for your cpa exam accounting information system as well as any other professional certification invest in yourself good luck study hard and stay safe